Let's Talk Ministry with Pastor Dennis Martin, where we talk everything and all things ministry. Well, hello, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to today's podcast, Let's Talk Ministry with Pastor Dennis Martin. I'm grateful to have you with me on today. And of course, uh, we do these podcasts to help and to enlighten and to uh, bring some type of inspiration to those of you that download our podcast. And uh, what a blessing it is to have you to join us on today. I have a special guest with me today, and we're going to be sharing in just a moment. And he's going to introduce himself. I'll introduce him. He'll let you know who he is. And uh, today is going to be a very interesting broadcast, an interesting podcast on today. Those of you that are in ministry, you may want to share this with someone, download it, because it's going to be a blessing. It's going to help you on today. Those of you that would like to follow us, I want you to follow me on Facebook at uh, Pastor D. Martin, on Twitter at PDL Martin. That's my Twitter at PDL Martin on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, DL Martin 96. You can follow me there. Or you can email me at rrcdmartin at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you, even on Instagram. You can follow me at DL Martin SR. Well, I am grateful to have you with us. And again, this podcast, Let's Talk Ministry with Pastor Dennis Martin. Well, I've got a very special guest today. He has been uh, someone that uh, we grew up together. And uh, he has uh, been a part of my life. I've been a part of his life. Uh, we're like brothers and actually we are related. And uh, he has been such an inspiration and a true friend. And I'm so grateful to have him with me today. I'm going to ask him to introduce himself to the audience uh, today. Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings. This is uh, Apostle Darrell Winston of Greater Works assembly in atlanta mercy seat assembly and also i uh, found the global prayer network here uh that is uh setting up chapters all over the country i kind of a privilege to share with my good friend and brother uh, bishop dennis martin and uh thank you for this privilege to share looking forward to the discussion today <laughs> yes sir well I, I, we're going to get right into it everyone uh, pastor winston uh, apostle prophet he has uh, been such a inspiration and uh, matter of fact with the uh, gift and uh, prophesying in the prophetic gift that God has given him and an anointing we've seen some great things that have taken place through him sharing and uh, I just want to find out uh, uh, Pastor Winston uh, when did you uh, get into uh, being a prophet or the prophetic ministry. I know that you have uh, that gift is strong on you, that mantle. Uh, when did you recognize that God was shifting you in that area? Wow. I, um, I um, grew up in the Baptist church, and I'm an ordained Baptist minister, And uh, but we would go over to the Kojic church uh, uh, in the evenings and... Um, I remember I had neighbors uh, when we were growing up who, would, when we lived in Detroit, would take us to the Kojic Church. And so I had experience primarily in the Baptist tradition. But then when I uh, started preaching in 86, I moved to D.C. and was a part of the Union Temple Baptist Church. Um, but I... But, but I um, I served there for about six years, and the Lord directed me back home to Atlanta to start Greater Works. However, those formative years of my ministry, I started seeking God and realizing that God started dealing heavily with me in dreams. And I remember I had a dream um, about this old elderly lady, and I described her to my mother, and she told me, she said, that's my great-grandmother. She said to me, she said, get to know who I am. And so I asked her, and she started telling me about how my great-grandmother what, what was used, and people would come all over the from around the area, and she would do what they call readings and basically prophetic 
words. And then I started discovering that prophetic grace over the bloodline. And then the Lord started dealing with me heavily uh, with prophetic ministry and uh, that degree that degree of grace on my ministry started manifesting. It just started growing and growing. And uh, I realized that there were very few, although there were uh, some, but there were very few models and even established um, examples for a holistic, balanced approach to the prophetic, both teaching, biblically sound, and one that uh, goes beyond just the seeing and saying, but uh, rooted and grounded in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the discipling measures of Jesus. And then I was, I was uh, determined that I wanted to learn more about the prophetic because I knew it was more than just fundraising. And so for me, God started dealing with me and, 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 and unveiling and, and, and instructing, and then I started connecting with prophetic people of light kindred, and um, then I started connecting with the apostolic prophetic fathers who were seasoned and were, were instrumental, instrumental in my formative years and uh, setting me on my path. And for me, that was just, it was just like that. Wow. Now, now you just said something that I, I think uh, we we need to maybe discuss for a minute or two. You said you start connecting with fathers, uh, those that were already in those, that area. You yeah. start connecting with them. They were more or less like uh, mentors to you in that area. You start watching them as they would go in forth in the prophetic. I started connecting because... I've always understood in, in, in the early days of my ministry, uh, you got to have spiritual fathers and mothers who have who are seasoned, who have already done, already gone before, and it's the Elisha Elisha principle, and it is the biblical practice of uh, being mentor slash father slash develop and. Um, I was not opposed to it because uh, I was always one who sought out the wisdom of the elders and the wisdom. I didn't have any uh, qualms about asking and inquiring of those who had already fitted themselves well in the grace that was on their lives, be it of the pastoral grace, be it prophetic, or be it any area, uh, teachers, because when you are hungry and when you desire to uh, operate in excellence, you realize that uh, there are those who you can glean from. And so for me, that was a no brainer. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that's important to share because, you know, a lot of times you have, uh, and this is no slight, but it's just a true fact. Sometimes you have younger uh, prophets and prophetess that are coming up that uh, don't connect themselves to anyone that's already doing what they're doing or someone with wisdom. And so therefore they, they make a lot of mistakes and uh, do a lot of things uh, early on in ministry that follow them the rest of their ministry. When, if they were under somebody or being mentored by somebody, somebody would be able to correct them and uh, to tell them what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And I think that's important. We don't hear enough about that actually today. I think, uh, Absolutely, because you know, and I think it's the <laughs> it's the technological age that we're in, where anybody can be, and they just come from anywhere, and the age of soundbite, and and it's the age of it's really the it, it's the age of make believe, because anybody can get before a camera, or get before a, a iPhone, or, excuse me, or a camera phone, and create the semblance of something, and uh, it's the furthest thing from the from reality. And we've seen this is the age of artificiality. I've seen folks pretend to be something, and you check them out. You find out nobody knows where they came from, and they, the person they claim that they are connected with don't even know them, or in certain instances, haven't seen them in years. Wow. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you hit that right on the head. And, you know, people get attitude about when you talk about those things because they feel that they don't need to connect with anybody, but... Uh, I, I just believe that you do need to connect with someone. And I guess 
Uh, you and I are probably old school, <laughs> but that's just the way we were raised and brought up that you do need uh, somebody. And I, I'm, I'm going to be talking about that tonight uh, when I do my live about uh, do you have a covering in ministry? Because I believe it's important for those things to happen. Um, now, I, I've seen and I, I'll share this with those that are listening uh, when it comes to uh, Pastor Winston. Uh, I remember in 2004, matter of fact, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was October 2004. You were coming to minister for our my pastoral appreciation. And uh, when you came to minister, I remember you when you got up, uh, you said on the way over here, the Lord spoke to me and showed me that you were going to be the head of some. You said, I don't know what it is. It's some type of position that you're going to be the head of. And uh, he's, you said, I don't know what this group, but whatever this group is, they travel. They seem to be evangelists. And I see you heading this group. And of course, at the time when you prophesied that, uh, that was October. We were going to uh, Memphis, I believe it was, for the convocation. It was an election year. And uh, Bishop Patterson uh, the late Bishop G. Patterson was elected again. And during that time, Bishop Richard White, that we call Mr. Clean, was the president. I was the first vice. And uh, you prophesied that in October. We went through the election process. And uh, I, I was like, okay, we got to wait and see. And when we came into the leadership conference here in Atlanta, uh, on the, that's 2005, I believe it was like the 19th or whatever it was, I was appointed the president of the International Department of Evangelism. Now, there's no way you could have known that because I didn't know I was going to get appointed. Uh, Bishop Patterson never said, I'm going to appoint you. Matter of fact, what Bishop Patterson told me, he said, just because you, just because you served as vice president don't mean you get to be president. <laughs> and so... Uh, you know, that was one of those things. I was like, okay, but that word came to pass. And then wow. another word you gave about, uh, this maybe been about three years ago, you at, at my church and you said, I see them redoing some paperwork, uh, when it comes to your mortgage. And, uh, I hadn't shared it with nobody and, and some was going on with me and the mortgage thing and stuff. And that was, I think in September and when we got to uh, January, uh, they sent me a paper and we redid, they redid my mortgage and everything. And my mortgage dropped uh, and I ended up paying about 300 uh, and maybe $50 a month for my mortgage. It dropped from, from, from 900 and some dollars to almost uh almost nothing really. And uh, you gave me that word. And so, uh, when, when, you know, when their words, are given, God. I hear those things and I, I hear what God is saying, but now I guess my question of the day to you would be now when you, you gave me those words and those words came to pass. Sometimes you got people today. There's some, I don't know if it's a new thing, uh, where people say, if you get a prophecy, and uh, if you you got to be a good recipient of the prophecy, if you don't receive the prophecy right, it's not going to come to pass. And so they sort of <laughs> say, justify that if uh, the prophecy didn't come to pass, it wasn't that they missed it. It was wow. that you didn't receive the prophecy right. What, what do you think about that? Wow. I mean, to me, that's to me, that is that ain't biblical. <laughs> OK. <laughs> And in certain instances, all these folks will be making up stuff as they go. And this is one of the, one of the most biblically illiterate generations um, that in recent times because uh, they know that the people don't read the Bible as we used to. And the Christian educations and various ministries where Sunday school was widely attended, and then you had all these reinforcements, these trainings and on, on top of that. And so even though we have access to the Bible readily, the masses of people and uh, don't read the scriptures and know them for themselves, or so they don't seek. And so they 
go on what sounds good and cliches they think are scriptural. And so what I, I've heard that now, case in point, there was a gentleman at my church, and this has happened to me on, on numerous occasions. There was a gentleman at my church. I looked at him in the month of March. I said, the Lord said, you're going to get a promotion. No, in February. I said, you're going to get a promotion in March. <laughs> I told him, I said, you're going to get a promotion in March. Is it, this is in February. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because God's got a sense of humor. March came. March came, and there was no promotion. In the month of July, he worked for the state of Georgia. He got notification from HR that they were getting some type of cost of living raise and promotion, raise and promotion, and they said it would be retroactive going back to the month of March. Wow. wow. <laughs> and uh, when he said it, I said, what? About $10,000. And he said, I didn't even doubt you. He said, my wife didn't doubt you. And I said, but I want you all to tell this because when I've heard people say, well, he said March, he said October, I understand that prophecy simply is the gift of grace. And that spiritual gift simply means the gift of grace. And so when we start talking about uh, the purpose of prophecy, edification, exhortation, and comfort, for we know in part and prophesy in part, what is messing us up is that uh, we ignore that a prophet knows in part and uh, prophesy in part. Although the Bible even teaches about warring over the prophets, it's found in Timothy. I would say that when people make those claims that you, if you don't receive it, I'm... I've had some prophetic words given to me that I said, what? And it came to pass. I mean, I've had some things that just didn't make sense. And that did not uh, negate that the person who spoke it was a prophet. But I understand that the dimension of the prophetic, and sometimes when we talk about prophetic words, we're thinking that they're going to come to pass in chronological order but they will come to pass sometimes in spiritual orders and sometimes it's the reversal. For an example, I've, I've seen where uh, I've ministered. I, I'll never forget this man. I was at a church in Denver, and this man was sitting in the back of the church. And I said, sir, what do you do? And he said, I don't have a job. I said, well, I see you making over $250,000 a year, and I see you with surplus. And so the pastor afterwards, he said, man, God, I know you hear from God. She said, but that's my nephew. He's living at home in my sister's basement. And I said, okay. And she's like, you said he was going to be making 250000 huh? And I perceived then, she's thinking, I'm missing. This boy don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> About three weeks after that, she called me screaming, asked me to call her right away. And so I... um. I didn't call her, and she called me the next morning. I saw she kept calling, and then I got on the phone. I said, what's going on? She said, do you remember? And then we, we recounted. I said, yeah. I said, the one that you told me lived with, she said, do you know that his father's, uh, a neighbor, his, his father's neighbor had a contract with the, uh, Colorado the, where he would pick up trash on the expressway and said this man got injured and said he was tired of it and gave the business to my nephew, and he, after he pays everybody, is going to be making 200 plus thousand a year, just like that. Wow. And that is how, that's the mystery of it all. But when I hear people say, well, it didn't come to pass because they didn't receive it, but when it is from God and it is a gift of grace, I believe now that there are those who sometimes will not do their part. Uh, I know that members of our church have been told that they're going to have a business, they're going to get a car, uh, uh, a house. They don't do the part. And so I try to give the practical piece, you know, um, prepare yourself not a to tell the people we're not talking about magic. And so I say that there is a participation, but not in the sense that if they don't do anything, I mean, if that it is, it is predicated always on them doing something. Sometimes I've seen things manifest come to pass six months, sometimes hours, 
and I've had a prophetic word given to me that didn't come, didn't even make sense until 2014. This gentleman gave me a prophetic word. He said, I see you in Manhattan. I see you meeting. This was like 2009. And um, I'm thinking like, hmm, maybe maybe I'm doing some type of business because I was doing this, a lot of business stuff. So maybe that's what it is. And in 2014, my son was cast as Young Simba in Broadway. And we were back and forth in Manhattan and for a year and a half going back and forth. And it didn't and it hit me as I was going to New York one day, two thousand fifteen. I said, This is what the prophet was talking about. Wow. Yeah, and and, and I I've seen that um again. Uh we've seen that uh all our lives and, and experience with you again. I've I've seen that happen uh with me and my family of stuff that you you may have said and, and we were like, Okay. And then it'll happen, and things will come to pass, and we're like, man. Uh, in, yeah, in our yeah. house, we'll say, man, Winston, Winston, don't be missing to it. I had a friend one time, I was sharing a prophecy with him or something that you had shared, and he said, he asked me, he said, now who said that? And I said, uh, Daryl Winston. He said, oh, okay. He said, if Winston said it, I believe it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because, you know, again, we, we live in this day of um, – Everybody, you know, throwing something out. And, and I'm very cautious, and I know you are too, of just throwing stuff out just to get people emotionally worked up to say, well, the Lord is saying something that maybe he didn't say. We mm -hmm. all know that, you know, we have to be very careful when we're uh, doing that because people sort of hinge on every word we say. Yeah. And they yeah, ride our words, and, and uh, you don't want to just be putting that out there for people. And, and uh, I know... Uh, I know it's been the passion of yours. I've seen it a couple of years that you even do uh, a school of, of the prophets, a ministry, I believe it is. Uh, it, it, tell us about that and what is your push and passion for that? Yeah, it, it, it grew out of uh, what I call uh, the manifestation of the prophetic. And I think that, you know, the trends, the toxic trends where people just go to the bookstore or go online and get a book. And then they say that there's something, and there's a, there was a sudden proliferation of everybody calling themselves prophetess because they were impressed by some of those on the national scenes, and all of them calling themselves prophets and apostles. And we became we have become a title drunk church. We have collars without Christ. We got we got truth. We we got our reformations without revelation. It's just out of control. And so, in the tradition. Um, uh, the principle of uh, Elijah, Elijah and Elisha, the mentoring, and uh, I knew that there had to be a place where people needed to come and get meaning. You had the seer anointing and people who believed that they were hearing from God and having dreams and visions. So I just created the first track was just understanding prophecy. And so we were dealing with what prophecy was and what it was not. And a lot of the people, especially with at, in the early 2000s, when people were hungry for a move of God, and we were seeing just the power of the Holy Spirit working in various churches, the mainline churches where, and historically they had not believed certain teachers and doctrines of tongues and healing and gift of healing. And so as these churches were opening up and pastors were seeking to embrace more of the fullness of God's power. And, um, and so we started training and teaching, and then it started growing, and then we started adding to each class and sessions as the people were expressing what they needed. And um, over the last 18 years, I would say, and I didn't do one this year because we were revamping some things. I'm teaching more leaders on prayer and some other things. I would say about a thousand people has come through our training, and some have come more than once. And uh, we everything from understanding dreams, and then we added different experiences to it, and and then we added a piece what we call prophetic activation, which is an exercise to let people know how close they live to the spirit realm, and how many of them have already we we said stuff like something told me. And, but the world calls is the intuition, but to letting people know there's a thin line between uh, the spirit realm and this realm and knowing how to hear the voice of God. And as a result of walking people through that process, 
we sought to foster uh, a greater sense for dis- of discernment and letting people know the early church knew the need for discernment. There's so many voices in the earth, and we got to make sure that we know the necessity of discerning the times and knowing what we should do. My. Well, I, I've I've seen and and seen some of those uh, sessions, and um, we're going to give opportunity for you to give information of, of those that may want to reach out to you and be in contact with you uh, on that. Uh, let me uh, let me ask this last question, and then uh, uh, let you uh, lead us in prayer and, and give you information, then lead us in prayer. Uh, what what would be your advice? today being uh, what one that I call a seasoned prophet, one that has uh, dealt around the country, around the world in the prophetic and, and seen things come to pass uh, that the Lord has given you. What would be your advice to some of the uh, young prophets and prophetess today? I would say we need to go back to the basics and under the law first mentioned the first time the word prophet was mentioned it was associated with prayer in the book of Genesis uh, and even um, uh, it was said to, about Abraham uh, that this man is a prophet uh, and uh, let him pray for you I'm paraphrasing it uh, prayer in terms of the spiritual discipline of fasting and recognizing that the early church knew the need for discernment and they lived in a world uh, where you had all these various belief and spiritual entities you had all this dynamics and they knew that it was a time that they had to discern between good and evil and so they knew that there needed to be a time to deter- to distinguish the difference between what was coming from the Holy Spirit or any spirit and uh, so I think that the proving ground and don't be afraid and you see when you have true you're anointed your gifts will make room for you and being humble and teachable there's the Bible even said about Jesus he became obedient even to the death of the cross now Jesus then then the scripture says about Jesus that he grew in wisdom and in stature Jesus the Christ now Jesus grew in wisdom and stature why can't those of us who say that we're followers of Jesus know that we have to grow in wisdom and statues? And these folks who want to be something rather than to be in, they want to, they, 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 they are obsessed with, I would say, fame and obsessed with notoriety, which is nothing but ego. So there's an emptying that goes along. And when you are on the backside of the mountain, like Moses, who was rare, who was revered as one of the greatest prophets, and when you've been tending your father, uh, the sheep, like uh, like like David, and you got to care bears and, and 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 lions before you can lead. And so these, the principle of uh, of serving and being a servant leader, and pouring water on your leader's hands like Elisha, is a time honored practice and it's the path for promotion this tendency to skip stages of development is not even natural and our first that which is natural then which is spiritual we go through stages of development we don't come out of our mothers and fathers womb driving cars we got to go through the stages of development, the toddler state, the infant, the toddler, you know, the preteens and teens and adulthood. But this whole tendency to where everybody uh, have, everybody has a word, that, and then they don't understand that there's prophetic protocol. Let it be judged. And if it's a true word from the Lord, Dr. Connie Williams said this years ago, and I never forgot, she said, if a true prophetic word from God will not spoil and uh, I've, ha- I've had conversations with pastors who had these renegades in their churches who said that they were prophetic, and every week they wanted to give a word. And then they couldn't, then they went to the parking lot, and then, you know, they went to the bathroom. Then they started giving out parking lot prophecies. And when the pastors shut it down, then they said, well, oh, they're hindering my gifts. Well, you've got to be teachable, and you've got to know without a doubt that there are those who God has placed in the earth who will be open to the gift of grace on your life. But there's a time of serving. And I always say, if you want to go up, you got to first go down. 
You cannot, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he'll exalt you in due season. You cannot in any way say that you call to the nations and we can't get you to come to your local church. Wow. We can't get you to serve in your local church. You ain't fit. And there are many who are going all around the world and say, I'm called to the nation who have disdain for the local church. How is that possible? That you, because every leader needs a pastor. And ultimately, every prophet is have to be submitted to a pastor because the pastoral anointing is not the same as a prophetic anointing, evangelist. And so I think now, with all this stuff that we're seeing played out, more than ever, we can't negate the law of order, and we cannot be dismissive of these time-honored practices. Ain't nobody trying to stifle you or put you in bondage, as some would suggest. But you know there's such a Jezebel spirit, and of course we know Jezebel has nothing to do with just a gender. It is a prototype of a spirit. And the name Jezebel literally means without husband, without Lord, without, without, because her daddy, when he named the daughter of Ismael, he knew that was no man was going to be able to do anything with my daughter. <laughs> so wow. that spirit is a radical spirit. Can't know about they wild and they, they don't heed instructions. They think everybody is against them, and it's a lunatic spirit, and it's hit the church in mass. But we can't, we can't, we got to stand flat-footed and cast it out by doing what God has called us to do. And so my my statement to those who've been anointed and appointed by your time. Uh, your gifts will make room for you and put you before a great man. And, and and there's something about discerning the times and being able to know that as gifted as you are, is all of us can miss it and all of us can get into error. And so you want to have seasoned men and women of God who you are humble enough to take instructions and can speak into your life and say, brother, no, sister, no, you need, uh, you need to go back and pray again. And I think that that is needed more than anything else. Oh, let me tell them, they can reach me at, you can reach me at apostle at dwinstonministries.com. They can follow me on Twitter at Reverend Nabi, N-A-B-I. Go to my website at darylwinston.com. And um, then they can find us on the Global Prayer Network by going to the Global Prayer Village dot com. Any of those ways uh, you can find information on the ministry and what we're doing. Oh, well, I, I I thank you so much, and I, I totally agree with you. Now let me let me get you to pray for just, just give us a word of prayer, and then we're going to go. Okay, dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace for your loving kindness. We thank you for those under the sound of my voice that you call to listen. We thank you now that they are enlightened and strengthened and stirred. I pray now that everyone under the sound of my voice will walk in the fullness of grace and even abide in your calling and purpose. I pray that each one will make their calling and election sure. Enable them, O oh Lord, to be perfected by you and strengthened and established. Bless your servant. Dennis Martin, as he continues to uh, be used mightily, continue to open doors for him that no man can shut. Continue to, O oh Lord, cause him to flourish in this day. Bless his household, bless his children and his children's children from this time forth, even forevermore. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, Prophet. We thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you and your family. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, man. All right. All right, everybody. That was uh, Apostle Darrell Winston, and uh, I tell you, uh, you need to get in touch with him. He has a unusual gift of prophecy when he speaks. Uh, so many things that he's spoke to our family, to me personally, uh, I've seen it come to pass and seen God do it. And so you definitely want to get in touch with him, uh, and uh, you want to download this and share it with somebody as he talks about uh, the prophetic ministry. Now, again, if you want to reach me, you want to be in touch with me, follow me. You can do so on my Facebook page at Pastor D. Martin. And on Twitter, you, Twitter, you can do it at P. D. L. Martin. And on YouTube, D. L. Martin 96. If you're on Instagram, you can follow us on D. L. Martin S. R. That's for senior. And then my website, dlmartin.org you can follow us there if you want to be a blessing 
to what we're doing here and to help us keep this going, uh, you can uh, cash at me at uh, DL Martin. That's the dollar symbol in front of DL Martin, the cash app, and be a blessing to the work of the Lord. Or you can do it on DLMartin.org. Well, God bless you until our next podcast. I want you to know that we're talking everything ministry. It's to inspire, it's to help, it's to lift you as you do the work of the Lord. Thanks for joining Pastor Martin. Visit us at www.dlmartin.org or email us at rrcdmartin at gmail.com.